Hi y'all. Today we are going to be finishing up um, chapter two or unit two. Um, it is uh, 2.5 is our last lesson in this unit and so we're going to go over inverse functions. So first let's talk about what an inverse relation is. Um, it's the interchanging of your x values and your y values. What this does is it causes a reflection across the line of x, um, x equal to y. So, for example, if we use um, this example that's given, we're told we want to use x squared plus 1, and we're given these values to create five ordered pairs for the relation, and then we're going to graph it and graph the inverse. So we can do that. Our points are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 as our x values for the original function. So then uh, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1. And then those values are going to repeat as well. So if I were to graph the original function that we're given, we would have a point at um, that should be a 1, right? All right, we would have a point at 0, 1, a point at 1, 2, and negative 1, 2, and then points at 2, 5, and negative 2, 5. And so this is the original function. So now, if we want to think about the inverse of this function, um, which is an inverse relation in this case, because it can't be a function, it's not going to pass the vertical line test when we um, do that. We are just swapping our x and y values. So our y's from here become our x's, and our x's from here become our y's. So we can now graph that, those points. So now we have the point um, 1, 0. We have the point um, 2, uh, negative 1. And to positive one, and the points uh, five negative two and five two, and so this is our inverse relation. And again, it's a relation because it would not pass the vertical line test, so we cannot call it a function. Okay, so what I want you to realize is because of that xy swapping that goes on, all we're doing here with our graph is reflecting across the uh, y equals x line. So that's an overview of how inverses work. So, use the graph on the previous slide and find the following information about the relations. So, the domain on the previous slide is a parabola, so we know that's negative infinity to positive infinity. And our minimum was at 1, so our range was from 1 to infinity. Because we swapped those x values and y values, now our domain for the inverse relation is the range from the original function. And the range for the inverse relation is the domain from the original function. So those swap as well. And again, that's just referring to the fact that we reflected across that line. All 
All right, so with that in mind, we can take a function that we don't have a formula for and create the reflection by just simply um, reversing the points. So we would have 5, 2 as our first point. This 1, 3 would now be 3, 1. This point of negative 4, 2 would now be 2, negative 4. And this point of negative 6, negative 3 would now be... Um, negative 3, negative 6. And so then we can see that reflection being made. So all we did on here was flip those points, our x and our y's, right? Now, what makes a inverse function is a little bit more complicated. We talked about how if we just do the inverse of just a straight parabola, that's not a function, it's relation because it doesn't pass the um, vertical line test. So this is the formal definition of a um, function. And so remember the last example on 2.4, we showed that those two were inverses of each other because we got the same thing when we did the composition function. And so um, we got x for both of those. So the same rule applies here when we're thinking about functions in general and inverse functions. With that being said, you know that it um, it's one to one if um, there is the inverse is also a function and not just a relation. And that happens when you can pass the horizontal line test, right? And we know that makes sense, right? Because we talked about how a parabola was not, um, was not, did not have an inverse function. It had an inverse relation. Well, a parabola doesn't pass the horizontal line test, right? So it's not one to one. So it only has an inverse relation, not an inverse function. So let's think about one to one here. If I look at this first one here, I can see that it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So it can only have a um, inverse relation, not an inverse function. But B passes the horizontal line test. So it indeed has an inverse function. So the last thing we want to be able to do is be able to find the formula of an inverse function. And we have precise steps that we can use every single time, and it always works. So those steps are replace the f of x with y, then switch your x and y, because we know we switch x and y's when we do our points, so that makes sense, right? And then solve the resulting equation for y and replace y with the inverse function notation, which is f to the negative 1. So let's go ahead and do that for this one. So for the first step, we're going to replace f of x with y. So we get y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Now we're going to swap x and y in our second step. So we get x equals 2 thirds y minus 4. Now we're going to solve for y. So if I add 4 to both sides, this is the beginning of step 3. So if I add 4 to both sides, I get x plus 4 equals 2 thirds y. And then to get rid of that 2 thirds in the front, I can multiply by the, um, by the reciprocal. And so if I multiply this by the reciprocal, then I get... Um, 3x plus 12 over 2 equals y. So the fourth step is to replace y with the um, inverse function notation. And so our inverse function is 3x plus 12 over 2. And it is a function, not a relation, because it's linear, right? A line... Um, unless it is a horizontal line, is going to be a function, is going to have a inverse function. All right, so determine whether the function is one-to-one. -one. If, if it is, find a formula for its inverse. So we can determine if it's one-to-one. -one. 
by thinking about what the graph looks like, right? This is a cube, and we know an original cube looks like this, right? Well, we know that is going to be one to one because it passes the horizontal line test. And it doesn't matter how the transformation happens. The fact that it's down five is not going to change the fact that it is, um, it's going to pass that horizontal line test. So now we can find the inverse by following those steps. So step one is replace f of x with y. Step two is to swap x and y. Step three is to solve for y. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I get x plus 5 equals y cubed. So if I take the cube root of both sides, then I get y equals the cube root of x plus 5. And then the fourth and final step is to replace that y with the inverse notation. No, oh, I told you wrong up here. That's a square root function. But the same thing here with the cubic root, if we think about the shape, it's like this. So it too will pass the horizontal line test. All right, last one. I'm going to show you how to use uh, do this one because sometimes the steps don't always occur to us for this one because you kind of have to be creative about pulling out your y when you're solving. So let's just take a look. So the first step is to replace f of x with y. Then we swap x and y. So we get x equals y plus 1 over y minus 7. Then we want to solve for y. So first, I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 7 to get that denominator to go away. So I get x times y minus 7 equals y plus 1. Now the trick here is we can't just subtract y because then everything's on the same side, right? x and y, both variables are on the same side. We don't want that. We want y equals. Um, and this y is getting in the way. So a creative way to get rid of that is to distribute the x. So I get xy minus 7x equals y plus 1. Now I can move the term with a y in it to one side and the term with an, without y to the other side. So I can do minus xy here and plus, uh, minus 1 here. And of course, whatever I do to one side, I'm doing to the other. So then I get negative 7x minus 1 equals uh, y minus xy. And now I can factor that y out to get 1 minus x and then divide by that 1 minus x. So we get... Uh, y equals negative 7x minus 1 over 1 minus x. So we can write that as our inverse function. Something else I want you to realize is you can pull um, a negative out of both of these and the function would look a little different. So this is the same answer, it's just with the negative pulled out. So if I pulled the negative to the front here and the negative to the front here, on the top and bottom, I would get uh, 7x plus 1 over a negative 1 plus x. So then in that case, the negative goes away and I get just positive. 
So that's the same thing as saying positive 7x plus 1 over negative 1 plus x. Or to get that negative 1 on the bottom to go away, essentially, that's the same thing as saying 7x plus 1 over x minus 1. So you could get three answers that look different but are actually mathematically the same. And that concludes 2.5. So um, next time we're together, we'll work on unit three.